Okay, let's start with your character and who you play and a little bit about her. I play Tessa and she is, um, oh man, there's so much about Tessa. She's a very complicated woman and she is a very damaged woman. So she was really fun and juicy to play. It's always fun as an actor to play those really complicated characters. So what attracted you to that? Was it that she was this very complicated exactly. woman? I think that's exactly what kind of brought me to Tessa and wanting to be Tessa was just the levels and layers and she wasn't just a one-dimensional villain or, or just the monster. She's very human and I think what she's going through and what she's feeling and the heartbreak and the fear is all relatable. It's just that she goes a little oh, too well, far with it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do you do put so much into this role without even saying a lot, or it it's all in, I think, in your eyes when you're there. <laughs> so did you go to any deep preparation for it, or how did you get into this woman's psyche? Right. Because it, you did so well. It, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's very nice of you. Um, I think for me to get into it, I... It, I always sort of start with whether or not I can emotionally understand the character. If if she was, if she was too much of a just you know bad guy, I, I, I have to have some sympathy and some compassion um, for her. And and f like it's sort of weird, but you know as I'm playing her, that means for myself as I am mm -hmm. being her. And um, almost a, I think Tessa is you know she's heartbroken you know she is so incredibly terrified of being alone of ending up alone and not and, and all of her value for her, you know her she has decided what makes her valuable is this man and whether he loves her mm -hmm. um, and that's a terrible position to put yourself in especially when that man has moved on right. so I could I could just I could get into it by first starting with you know feeling compassion for her. And let's talk about where this all came from, her relationship with her mother. Mm. And they, they do show a little bit of backstory, which I thought was interesting and, and said a lot with yeah. a little. So can you talk about Tessa's relation, her, her, her dynamic with her mother? Right. I think the relationship um, between Tessa and her mother is incredibly important. And those there's just a couple of brief scenes, but they're very important to inform the audience why Tessa is the way she is. And now it's not all her mother's fault. We always blame the mother. <laughs> but, you know, certainly her mother is incredibly responsible for where Tessa has ended up. And she obviously is not well. And she has had mental illness issues since she was a young girl that was not treated, that was not taken care of in any way, that was not even addressed at all. So that I do put on her mother, you know. <laughs> but at this point, you know, it's just, she is like a pot that's just about to boil over. And when Tessa first meets Julia, and we'll talk about working with Julia, what is her first impression of her? Because you can see that it, it starts to go into a whole mm -hmm. different direction. So what, it, what do you feel that her first impression is of Julia? I think Tessa's first impression of Julia is almost just what she says to her in that scene over Margarita's. She is so effortlessly beautiful. She is sort of so vivacious and sexy in her own way. I think Tessa admires her for that. I think she is intrigued by it, but then that that turns very, very quickly into feeling threatened by it um, because she is Tessa is so not that. Mm -hmm. And for her to, she cannot conceive of, of this man that she loves moving on with someone so y uniquely different than her that it, it just makes her feel like um, who she is is wrong. You know, mm -hmm. it would have been almost easier for Tessa if he'd moved on with another woman just like her. Then she would feel like, oh, he's just trying to replace me. I'm so great, he can't replace me. But to move on with somebody completely different makes her feel like, did he ever love me? Mm -hmm. am, I, am I not even his type? Mm -hmm. So um, I think she does kind of, I think she, and I certainly think by the end she really respects her because she doesn't play the victim. Mm -hmm. And she kind of, she brings it just as much. <laughs> That's for and sure. And Tessa, but you know, she, <laughs> she needs to be challenged. <laughs> uh, this is a very, obviously women driven film with a women director. Can you talk about Denise Denovi and what she brings to this whole story in this film? Denise Denovi is such a powerhouse of just talent and um, 
emotional evolution. <laughs> she is so incredible. I loved every moment of working with Denise and I trusted every moment of it because she knew exactly what she wanted. She was so prepared um, and she had really thought through this very carefully how she wanted the story to unfold down to details like the little necklace that Tessa wears with just Tessa's initial on it. You know, no charm for her daughter, just Tessa. Um, and I, all of that was Denise, you know, and, th and that level of detail and um, preparedness gives me as the performer so much freedom. You know what I mean? Like you just, you know, in a, it's sort of an odd juxtaposition, but you know the rules, you know what you're doing, so then now you can play and explore and kind of break the rules and go for it. And Denise was so amazing about supporting that and allowing that and collaborative. And she, obviously, she's such a talent. I mean, mm -hmm. she's been an uh, incredibly successful producer for years, and then she just stepped into directing like it was no big thing. I mean, what an awesome example to set for all of us. Like, oh, you know what? If you walk into it with passion and confidence, maybe you can rock it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, being the, obviously this film I think is going to be relatable to, on a lot of levels in modern day uh, what do you hope that the audience will take away from the film I mean it's a thriller but still it's got a lot there's some a lot deeper things in here so what do you right. hope that they walk away with I think from you know from my perspective from the Tessa perspective I hope women walk away from it knowing that their value has nothing to do with the man that they're with um, or their partner in life. It is about you have to be just as fine alone as you are with someone else. In fact, you probably have to be better mm -hmm. at alone than who you are with somebody else because you can't, how do you evolve emotionally if you know, you're know you so concerned about what other people think or whether you are loved, if that's your value by mm -hmm. a man. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's, that's sort of a really unconcise way of putting it. <laughs> But basically, I hope women walk away going, I will never let a man define me. Hey, Vale here. So did you like that video? Well, keeping with the crime thriller genre, following I have a list for you of some of the best crime movies based on true stories and events. Now, these movies are a double banger as you don't just get entertainment, but also the history of the crime and you get to know what really happened. The Wolf of Wall Street, based on the true story of Jordan Belfort. Monster, starring Charlize Theron, based on the serial killer Eileen Wuornos. American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington, based on the criminal career of Frank Lucas. Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, based on the rise and fall of Lucchese crime family associate Henry Hill. M from 1931, believed to be based on the real life case of serial killer Peter Curtin. Zodiac, based on the notorious serial killer Zodiac. Rope from 1948, believed to be inspired by the real-life mur murder of 14-year-old Bobby Franks in 1924. Donnie Brasco, based on the true story of Joseph D. Pistoni, an FBI undercover agent. Alpha Dog, a drama based on the life of drug dealer Jesse James Hollywood. An American Crime, based on the true story of the torture and murder of Sylvia Likens by Indianapolis housewife Gertrude Banizuski. Catch Me If You Can, based on the real life of Frank Abagnale. What's your favorite real life based crime thriller movie? Let me know in the comments below. Keep up to date with all the latest releases by subscribing to our channel and checking the notification bell. See you next time.